gold. Gold is worse poison to a man's soul, doing more murders in this loathsome world than any mortal drug. William Shakespeare Columbus would write from the New World in 1503, Gold is a wonderful thing. With gold's power we can get souls into paradise. And his curse has never been lifted. Gold looked like sunshine that had fallen down to earth. It predated money. It was the sun's sweat, whose light was a talisman that gave the world life. The sun's gold grew crops, and silver was the moon's tears, the rain that spelled food. The beauty of gold lay in its being renewed, like the sun itself, for it always shone, whatever form it took, it never tarnished. Flashing in the sun, it symbolized the magic of man's life on earth. Rituals used vessels made of the golden metal to serve nectars and ambrosias, bonding the tribe together, lifting the spirits, till envious trolls, seeing its power and desiring its magic shine, would commodify it. The colonists had no time for gold's cosmic meanings, for notions that gold was the sun itself mysteriously come to earth. Material wealth was what they wanted, so they kidnapped the Inca king and held him ransom. A bargain was struck to save Atahualpa's life. His people were sent away to fetch back gold from all over Peru. They brought tons of it for their king's captors. They made a mountain of it out of love for him. The Spaniards took it. They garroted the Inca king. They broke their bargain. Thus, the Inca gold found its way back to Europe. And now we have banks juggling stolen wealth, courtesy of some notes they pretend are gold. But this currency has a direct bloodline linked to a beloved king's murder by greedy traitors. With their money, blood money, the heir to a crime. If you trust someone, you don't need money, do you? Money's invented to deal with people you don't trust. But then, of course, you have to trust in money. Here's a successful banker with regular bowel movements. In the lavatory, having a Midas touch is not much help to you. His bowel movements require one supplementary move. He needs to reach out for a piece of absorbent material. But, lo and behold, it's turned to metal. Gold! It's no use for dealing with his present needs. He may be spending every minute of his day lusting after wealth, but at this moment his skill is misplaced, painful, completely useless. He grabs his mobile to ask someone to bring him some toilet paper. His mobile's now gold. No dialing tone, no signal. The line has gone dead. So despairingly he chucks it in the bog to join his gold excreter lurking in the bowl. He tears his hair out. This now turns to gold, at which he gets up, clenching his buttocks together because he has to get ready for work and doesn't want to mess up his investment office with freaky gold crap. Mephistopheles, with whom he's had past dealings, enters the bathroom. This is out of hand, says the banker. But it's what you wanted all along, turning everything to gold through treating people like scum, as you have. You forgot yourself and embraced capitalism. The extraordinary belief the nastiest of men for the nastiest of motives will work for the benefit of all mankind. John Maynard Keynes, you will recall. So, keep buying shares and play the futures market, shorten human lives, turn humanity into casino chips gambled for profit. But I'll leave you now, covered in guilt 
double-edged crap and gibbering madly of footsies, Nasdaqs, balances of payments, of liquidity markets, Dow Jones indices, and flickering digits on dizzying screens. The mumbo-jumbo of economic mayhem measuring your life. You get and you spend, trapped by numbers rackets, while gnomes in dark rooms drain your existence, strangling you as surely as the Inca king's garrote. All societies based on money are ugly, and gold's vengeful ghosts will ensure the rich are impoverished by their hatred of the poor, ensuring they skulk in gated communities for fear of kidnaps, muggings, robberies. Crimes, acupuncture, adjusts an economic imbalance, whilst man's unshared, superfluous piles speak revealingly of the tasteless folly of his murderous mission to hoard up sunlight. God gave me my money, said John D. Rockefeller. But the unwelcome discovery that looking into the sun too long makes you blind and mad, and fondling its gold puts you in hock to those you've ripped off, means gold's best left where it is. Money must not any longer be the great god that hedges in some and hedges out others, for money is but part of the earth, and after our work of the earthly community is advanced, we must make use of gold or silver as we do of other metals, but not to buy or sell. Gerard Wynne Stanley and 44 others. A declaration from the poor oppressed people of England directed to all that call themselves or are called Lords of Manners. 1649. I don't know if it's God we have murdered. I don't think that is possible. But capitalism has killed compassion. In a society which only worships the dollar, those who aren't potential income-generating units have no value. None. Rebecca Gibson